What's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to implement a pause menu in your Pi game games, including how to make buttons that only work when you're on a pause screen, how to make a semi-transparent pause screen, and what to draw and what to do in terms of event handling. So we're going to cover all of that in today's video. All right, so for this video, we're gonna do something a little different from what my channel normally does, which is I normally walk you through setting up the entire project that I'm talking about in the video um, from scratch. But for this video to keep it short and just concise to what you want, which is really a pause screen functionality, I'll talk to you about the pro project that I already have because I'm assuming you wanna put a pause menu in, you already have a project as well. So I'm working on a Jetpack Joyride remake that'll be coming out on the channel soon. But basically right now, all I have is um, this screen that kind of continuously scrolls past the player and all you can really do to interact with it is use the space bar to fly up and down. There's no death, there's no restart or anything like that yet. Um, but this is a good point in the game to start talking about how I'm going to implement a pause screen in it. So that'll be functionality that the full-blown game has, which will come out in uh, the next week or two, hopefully. Um, but uh, something that I already have is this shell of a Pi game game built. So if you need help setting up a Pi game game from scratch, check out the Pi game tutorials on my channel. I do start at the very beginning um, and I talk through how to do everything we'll be doing in this video in a lot more detail. So I'll try to keep it moving pretty quick. Um, the most basic thing I can start with and say you'll want is a variable to keep track of whether pause is true or not. And so I'm going to call that variable pause, which makes sense to me. And I'm going to set equal to false initially. So if you want the game to start on a menu, you could have a variable pause or menu and actually set it equal to true when the game first boots up, that would be fine. I want the game to kind of drop you right into playing and then you can pause if you want to. So I'm just gonna set up pause equals false in the beginning. Okay, and now I want to do, all right, how do I make this pause active or inactive? And so I'm gonna come down to my event handling, which is the code under for event in pygame.event.get. And what I'm gonna do in here is in the key down section, I'm going to add a section. So right now the only key I check for something with is uh, if event.key equals pygame.space. So whatever key you decide you want to actually initiate pause, um, to add that in here. And so I'm gonna do if event.key is equal to pygame.pygame dot k underscore escape. So I'm going to use the escape key in the top left corner of my keyboard. Uh, it's not a key I would use for anything other than pausing or potentially leaving a program. So it's nice because sometimes like Q, W, A, S, D, or even like the arrow keys or enter or space, you would want to involve those with your game. The escape key is pretty nice. You can just re reserve it for this functionality. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say if pause is true when I hit escape, I'm also going to use that to undo pause. But then what I'm going to say is else pause is true. So with this little bit of code, I'm using the escape key to activate pause, but then also you can click it while pause is active and you'll leave pause. Okay. So that is um, all we have to do to sort of actually toggle pause on and pause off. But then the thing that we want to do um, is we want to take a look at everything that is moving, everything that we control in the game, and we want to add conditions to where it only does that in the event of pause. And so one thing we're going to do is the space key, which the player is in control of the um, of the player character's height using this space key. When you release the space key, when you click the space key, um, you're moving the player all over. And so all we'll do is you can do this one of two ways. You could either say and not pause on those command lines. So you could do that. Or you could say if not pause and then you could put this stuff underneath so either of those would be valid basically you don't need this code if you do it this way um, but you don't need that extra line of code if you do it this way so these are both valid and they're both good ways to just interrupt um, the player's ability to move where the character is um, during <laughs> during a pause sequence okay and since we're down here here's the code that says 
Um, the total distance traveled is plus equals the game speed. This is where we change the Y velocity. So whatever your comparable part of what keeps the game moving, what checks for collision, what moves enemies, what moves the player, um, anything like that, that for, for me, this is the section that moves the player in the Y direction and, um, all the like, uh, calculations to see how the player should change based on whether or not I'm pressing the, the booster, the space key. I'm just going to add a here, if not pause to this whole section. Okay. And so, um, I'm just going to move all of my active code that, uh, updates every loop and handles movement. I'm going to add an, if not pause clause to it. Okay. So that is actually all we have to do there. And that should be um, really straightforward. Hopefully that makes sense and it's easy enough to apply in your project as well. Um, now let's come up to something because a really useful feature when you pause is to have a pause menu or display. And so to do that, let's go ahead and add a condition under our functions like this is what draws the screen, this is what draws the player, this is what checks if you collide with obstacles which I don't have obstacles yet, um, but it does check if you collide with the ceiling or the floor. Now let's say, okay, if pause, then let's go ahead and get a few buttons. I'm going to say maybe reset and a save button are on my pause menu. And then this function draw pause. So I have this draw screen function, draw player function, check for collisions function. Now I'm going to make a draw pause function and I'm just going to put pass in here for now but we're going to come in here and we're going to put everything on the screen that we want to display only when the pause menu is active okay um, and so that should be pretty easy one more thing just this is kind of specific to mine but I use the draw screen function to actually move um, all of those lines that you see like sliding to the left, I move these lines in my draw screen function because that's where I uh, draw them and iterate through. So I'm just also going to add a um, only move those lines if pause is not active. So I'm going to do it uh, like that as well. This is a specific thing to me. You just want to make sure any movement, anything that updates while the game is playing, you can um, just suspend movement with using the pause functionality, okay? So um, that's it for that. And then what I think we should probably do is now talk about what to do for the draw pause um, function, okay? So let's go ahead and say in draw pause, let's make a rectangle. You may have seen in the intro of the video, I actually use a full screen um, somewhat transparent cover of the uh, of the screen. So um, in this pygame.draw.rect, I'm going to draw it onto a surface. And this is something that maybe you don't have in your game actually. So I will talk about this. If you missed the previous video on the channel, I actually talk about how to make transparent and semi-transparent objects on the screen. And you're probably used to, if you develop in Pygame, setting up a screen to be pygame.display.setMode with the width and a height. Then I make a surface that is the same size in terms of width and height as the screen. But then I add this parameter pygame.src.alpha. This lets me draw things that have a uh, parameter called alpha, which is how transparent or opaque it is. And then when I do screen.blit on my draw screen function, so screen.fill with the color black and then screen.blit this text and all of these things, what I'm going to do in draw pause is I'm going to draw these things onto the surface and then I'm going to do surface.blit. So I'm going to, or screen.blit the surface. So in here, I'm going to draw a bunch of things onto the, onto the surface and then do screen.blit surface 00. zero. So I hope I didn't lose too many of you with that, but basically I'm creating a menu, which I'm calling a surface, and I'm only drawing that onto the screen when pause is active. That's what's going on here, okay? So let's go ahead and say that we want this, uh, this pause menu to be like a medium gray, which is 128, 128, 128, and then mostly transparent. So this is a, third, a fourth value, zero to 255. Um, I'm going to use 150. You can play around with this. This is how transparent this object is going to be. And now I'm just going to say the, per, the dimensions of the rectangle are going to be 0, 0. So start in the top corner and then be as wide as the whole screen and as tall as the whole screen. 
And so the only thing we've done so far is we have uh, drawn a semi-transparent rectangle on the screen. Um, and so actually, let me get rid of the restart and saves equals and just do draw pause real quick. And let's take a look at what this does for us. So if I run this, okay, I've got my game. The functionality still works. I'm going to hit escape now. And you can see I have this mask over the screen. I can still see where the player is and I can still see where the lines are and my score and everything. And if I hit escape again, okay, it resumes. And so that might be all you're looking for here. Maybe you know how to draw more things onto uh, the menu screen on your own. If so, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe before you go. I hope that was the functionality you were looking for. Now let's just take this one section further and add some functionality to the pause menu that would be, in my opinion, very common, okay? So let's get those buttons back in. And let's say we have two functionalities we want to include in here. So we need to return... Um, like a reset and a save button. I, that's what we said we were going to get. We called them restart and saves. In here, we'll say reset and save just so we don't have uh, duplicate names. All right, but so we have this rectangle getting drawn on the surface that is uh, semi-transparent. Now let's draw a smaller, uh, just regular dark gray, so a solid rectangle on top of that that will be where we actually put our text in our menu, okay? And so let's put this a little bit more in the middle of the screen, like 200, 150, put it wherever makes sense for you. And now we're not looking to fill the screen with a solid object. That would kind of defeat what we just did, uh, defeat the purpose. And we'll make it a solid rectangle with rounded corners, radius 10. So those are those two extra parameters we just put on here. And uh, it wants to reformat, that's fine. Okay, so now we have a rectangle we can put some uh, text into, and then let's draw two buttons. So we'll draw the reset button and we'll draw the save button. We'll do this really quickly. It's going to be still pygame.draw.rect and draw.rect, and we'll put it on the surface, and we'll make these two buttons white so that you can click on them. Um, we'll make the first one at position 200, 220. 28050. Again, I'm not going to dive too much into specific style recommendations on these buttons because I'm guessing you're here to understand how to implement a pause function um, and you're not a total Pi Game beginner. If you are a total Pi Game beginner, like I said, I have a bunch of resources for you on the channel. Um, but we're not going to uh, dive too much into each parameter of every object here. So now let's do surface.blit and let's put some text on these things. Let's go ahead and say game pause uh, and then escape to resume. So you could say escape key or whatever you want. I'll just say escape to resume and then anti-alias is true and then the text color will be black. And then the position we're going to put this on is going to be basically just inside that gray rectangle we made, so 22160. And we're going to copy this whole line because we're going to put text on both of those buttons as well. So we will say, oop, <laughs> what did I just do? Uh, I did copy it once, I copied it twice. All right. So we'll put on both of those buttons. We'll say uh, font.render. This first one will be restart, and this second one will be save. Okay, so these are going to be our buttons when we're drawing the pause menu. If you have more buttons on the pause menu, then just draw them all here. But then the Y coordinate for these buttons is going to be 230 inside those white rectangles that we made. And then we're going to return, reset, and save. Okay, so let's boot that up again. Um, and let's go ahead and take a look. When I hit escape now, all right, you can see we still get that semi-transparent mask over the whole screen that kind of changes the look and indicates it's frozen. And now we have game paused, escape to resume, or this restart button and the save button. And now neither of those buttons do anything um, because we haven't put that code in yet. So let's just last thing for this tutorial, let's take a look at how to do that together. We come back down into our event handling code which is getting a little bit more complicated because we're adding if not pause and if pause stuff like that. But now those buttons are the only buttons in my game, so we need to take a look at a new section. So we need to say if event.type is equal to pi game dot and then mouse button down because you'd click a button with your uh, key. And you could say and pause here if you wanted, okay? So now this code is only going to get checked during the pause section. Um, and what we'll say is we'll say if 
let's do restart dot collide point. So restart um, is what we call the reset button, the restart button. And if the mouse clicks with the event dot position, so that is how we figure out where the mouse was when it clicked, let's just reset whatever your key game variables are. Or if you put, excuse me, or if you put restart functionality inside of its own function, then you would put, you would call that function here because we just hit restart. Um, but for mine, it's pretty simple. We're just going to turn pause back off. We're going to set the distance back to zero. Um, I'm going to set my player Y back to the initial Y that the game starts at. And then I'm going to change my Y velocity um, back to zero. So these are just specific to my game. They're the things that I need to essentially um, reset the game so that I'm uh, starting over, if you will. And now I'll say if saves dot collide point with event dot pause. I'm not going to dive into how to like save a game uh, in this tutorial. That's a little more in depth. So we'll just turn pause back off. So you click either button, you go back to your game. Okay, let's test that super quick and then we'll wind this video down. So uh, now I'm flying, okay, I'm dodging obstacles, I'm getting a score, whatever. Oh, someone's at the door, I have to pause. All right, um, now let's say I come back, I want to keep playing, whatever, whatever. All right, oh, I was going for some achievement that I didn't get here. I'll hit enter and I'll hit restart. And I'm back to the beginning, my speed is reset. So this is just one way of implementing a pause menu in Pygame, in your Pygame games. I hope you found it useful. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the full Jetpack Joyride tutorial when it comes out. That's going to be a really fun game I'm looking forward to doing together. And in the meantime, I hope this was a useful and informative tutorial. There'll be a lot of cool stuff coming out on the channel soon, um, but also there might be a little bit of downtime as I have a baby coming in the next month. So um, just bear with me. Be sure to let me know in the comments below what you'd like to see more of on the channel. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for supporting the master tech. I will see you next time. Thanks. Good luck with your code. Bye.